A station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Thanks for joining us for DC News Now on this Friday. I'm Annalisa Gale. Mark Hall has the evening off. This afternoon, an investigation continues after a metro train derailed near the Reagan National Metro Station. All passengers, thankfully, though, are okay who were on board. Our Randy Bass is joining us live from that area. She heard from passengers and officials shortly after. Randy, we know there were delays. What do we know so far and what's the situation now? Yeah, and Alisa, the good news here, like you said, all people on board that train, all 43 passengers are okay at this hour. At this point, you can still see this train right behind me. It's still there, stuck on the tracks at this point. Some lingering delays, though, but nothing major at this hour. Trains traveling now in both directions again for the evening commute. We did have a chance to hear from officials this afternoon who tell us they believe a piece of braking equipment from another train actually fell off onto the track here, causing this train to derail. We saw video of the moment that train hit the equipment on the track, jerking the train at an angle as it tried to brake and a wheel slipped off the track as it left the Reagan National Metro Station. We are hoping to get that video here into our newsroom shortly and share that with you, but we did have a chance to hear from Metro CEO and General Manager Randy Clark. He was here on scene during that investigation this afternoon. Here's what he says happens next. The team is also going to be actively inspecting in the process already actually of inspecting track in the area where this the 3000 series train went. That was a blue line train. So we'll be doing a, a track inspection uh, between Franconia and uh, Largo. But we're out of, uh, out of caution. We are doing a, a full inspection of where that 3000 series train went. Yeah, like you just heard Randy Clark say, that investigation and inspection along the blue line here already underway this afternoon. No trains will travel along this stretch of track until that investigation is complete. We are waiting, though, to hear when that train will uh, will be moved from the tracks. Annalisa. All right, Randy, thanks so much. Well, happening right now, lawmakers on Capitol Hill have a little under 36 hours now to pass a bill to avoid a government shutdown. But right now, all signs point to a shutdown happening. House Republicans shot down a last minute plan earlier today in the divided House. 21 Republicans joined Democrats in voting against the legislation. A shutdown would likely spell disaster for hundreds of thousands of federal workers and contractors with parties divided over spending points tonight. Today's proposal would have boosted funding for the southern border but Democrats want more money for Ukraine and some disaster relief here at home. Lawmakers are weighing in this afternoon. Focusing on the views of the radical few instead of the many, Speaker McCarthy has made a shutdown far more likely. Shutting down the government is a choice, and it's a choice that would make the crisis at our southern border even worse. We'll have more on the details of where that debate stands from our Capitol Hill correspondent in a live report coming up in just a few minutes. And a shutdown lasting longer than a few days would be harmful to tourism here in the district. The Smithsonian Museums and the National Zoo have reserved finances in case of a shutdown or other emergencies. But those we spoke to this morning are worried about what closures would do to those visiting the district from across the country and even around the world. It would be kind of sad for people who are coming from other countries not to be able to go in and see that. All they'll be able to see is a you know, building, which are nice, but it's not the same. The good news for those in the district, local D.C. government activities are likely deemed essential and allowed to operate even during a shutdown. That was the case after the shutdown back in 2013. This includes services like trash collection, mail delivery and policing. And no government shutdown would not only not impact student loan payments, which are also scheduled to resume October 1st. The Education Department says shutdown or not borrowers payment will still be due. There may be some delays processing students applying for some federal aid there. However, that's because workers in charge of handling applications would be furloughed. 
All right, turning outside live. Look at Roslyn. It's a dry one compared to what we saw earlier this week. Let's get over to meteorologist Damon Matson. And it's the weekend, Damon, and it's looking better. So that's good. Yes, it certainly is, Annalisa. That much is for sure, as we are definitely enjoying those drier conditions and hopefully some sunshine by this upcoming weekend. But first and foremost, you saw that live look. It is still cloudy. We are stuck with some of that gray sky out out across much of the DMV heading into your Friday night. And unfortunately, it looks like that gray sky is going to continue to linger around here. Folks heading throughout the rest of your evening here. Overcast skies will continue. There have been a few breaks of sunshine here and there, not as much as we would like to see, but we could still see a few more peaks through some of that cloud cover. But as we go into the overnight here, it looks like mostly cloudy skies do prevail as we head toward the 10 11 o'clock hour even now temperature wise it's been comfortable out there today in the upper 60s low 70s but as we move into the night as well despite the cloud cover it looks like things are going to be a little bit more on the cool side as we drop those temperatures back down into the 50s so two big questions one do we get to enjoy that sunshine as we head into saturday and beyond does this cloud cover finally break up heading into the weekend and with that added sunshine possible could we also see a rise in our temperatures bring back a good amount of warmth as we roll on through your Saturday and Sunday we'll have a full check of your forecast coming up here in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. New at four Prince George's County police have charged a man with the murder of his girlfriend. This happened yesterday afternoon at an apartment complex on Harry S. Truman Drive. Police say 43 year old Keith Mabin Jr. shot and killed 43 year old Courtney Blackshirt. Mabin was taken into custody around 7 p.m. after threatening two strangers with a gun. Neighbors in the complex say the violence was a surprise. It's, it's tough because I, I, I've been living here um, since, since right before the pandemic, um, and, and, and it's, it's, it's been fairly quiet. Um, so so, so it's, 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 it's tough just knowing that, that's, that that kind of activity is happening just right across the street. Police are still looking for more information about this case, and they're hoping for some calls there. All right, turning now to sports. The Washington Commanders are looking to bounce back from a tough loss last weekend. This Sunday, they're heading to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. Sports director Derek Forrest joining us in studio with a preview now. Hey, Derek, Philadelphia is a tough team. Yes, certainly, but uh, the Commanders, they are going to have a tough task this weekend as they head on the road to take on the Philadelphia Eagles, who are currently 3-0 on the young season. Now, while the Commanders' defense will have their hands full Sunday, this is a get-right game for Sam Howell and the offense. After five total turnovers, including four interceptions and nine sacks last week versus the Buffalo Bills, Sam Howell cannot have the same results this weekend in Philly. And we can expect him to go out and play well, give us his best and, and you know, do, do the things he needs to do to give us a chance to win. Um, you know, I like what we've done this week. I, I like the, the tempo and the energy of practice. I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things that you, you know, you, you, you have a, a good feel for, for the way things are going and hopefully we can continue to, to do things well. So the Commanders will improve to 3-1 and one on the season if they can pick up the win versus the Eagles. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. Sunday over at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. In the studio, Derek Forrest, DC News Now.